This show is for entertainment purposes only. Do not mistake this show for medical advice. If you or anyone you know is in need of a dentist, please contact 480-391-0099 to set up an appointment. Welcome to our podcast. Sit back and relax. In a word, podcast. We're going to share. At the Dental Works Podcast, we will guide you, put out some bad jokes before we are through. Free information, here just for you. Sit back and have a good time. Today is June 6th. 2023, and this is episode number 121 of the Dental Works Podcast, the show about learning the ins and outs of dentistry from a patient's perspective. I'm Ted Work, and that over there is Dr. Terry Work. Hello, Ted Work. Dental Works is a family dental practice based in Scottsdale, Arizona, that has been providing cosmetic and surgical dentistry for over 27 and a half years. We have a little bit of a change of venue today. We are recording from the home studio of T Door Productions and the Dental Works podcast. Uh, same the bunker. High, same high quality. We're calling same it banner. The bunker. Cool, interesting artwork behind the banter or banner. But you know what? Uh, banter. The, the behind same, the banner. The same exact show. So uh, on our last previous. Uh, Two most previous episodes, we had Debbie Romano uh, from Paradise Valley Healthy Heartbeats. Oh, good one! Pulled that out of your ass. Uh, that I mean, I just that was right off the top of my head. I just had it locked and loaded. Uh, and you know, we we did those episodes, and during that time that those episodes were released, Doctor Terry and Doctor Marianne were in the the magical lands of of Greece and Turkey the Mediterranean the basically. Mediterranean or the Aegean Sea the Aegean which again i wish i had listened a little bit more during history class when i was in yeah. middle school and all that or geography or whatever like i literally well, we were, we're you busy. You just never listened. We're busy. And so I like, I don't think I Googled a map of the area until we were like on a flight to Houston. <laughs> Could have done a little more homework. So give us, <laughs> yeah, give us a little bit of a rundown of what the trip was and then kind of where you guys went. We're not right. really going to do a slideshow. We're show. not doing, <laughs> hey, here's 3,000 slides of Yosemite. I already had to sit through that. Oh, <laughs> so <last night>. we, <laughs> well, you know what? Um, yeah, basically uh, flew from Phoenix to Houston, Houston to Frankfurt, Germany. Yeah. Frankfurt, Germany to Athens, Greece, stayed the night in Athens, got on a boat or a ship that... Well, uh, which one is it? ...toured... Well, it was a ship. It was a cruise ship, toured the Mediterranean. Yeah. And again, the Mediterranean becomes the Aegean <gasps> near the Greek Isles and that kind of thing. What? So we went uh, Athens to a bunch of different Turkish ports and greek islands and that kind of stuff there's uh and it's funny they're famous for saying the greeks are famous for saying depending on who you ask how many islands there are some say there's a thousand some say there's two thousand some say there's three thousand well if you count every little tiny boulder that's sticking up out of the water yeah. then yeah but there's a, a thousand <clears throat> islands in uh in that area and unbelievable history starting sure. off with the uh, acropolis or the uh, is it the parthenon the acropolis every town has an acropolis okay it's sure. just right that's Greek the... for the highest point in the town sure but that would be called the parthenon uh is the first place we went of any consequence and well, it was there were six people total, and it was basically your cruise situation. Who all went with you? Eat till you throw up. Uh, so it was uh, 
your mom. What? And your mom's brother, okay. Tom. Tommy. His wife, Gina. Gina. And your mom's sister. Jack and Diane. Bev. <laughs> Bev and Mike. So Sucking on uh, chili dogs yeah, the entire outside, trip. Tasty Freeze. <laughs> outside the Tasty Freeze? Have you seen the so, version of that song where they, they do it at karaoke, but the only words that they sing is sucking on chili dogs for the whole melody of the no. entire song? It gets old, but no. You know, but it's we funny. did on the cruise ship. They did have karaoke, and so I embarrassed. Oh the yeah, shit. embarrassed the shit out of your mom there. So that that's was pretty fun. funny. It was. Uh, it can only be described as a cruise for old people. Thank God. That's we the only way. We really brought down the average. Yeah, <laughs> it was rough. You had to. You had to wait behind people walking in the hallways oh a lot. Oh God, it was uh, <laughs> that. Walker I hate City. that. The they most. had a Walker Corral before dinner. It was rough, but it was a very nice cruise ship. It's called Regent Cruise Lines. Very well organized, and we're going to put a plug out for Noam Meppen, who Noam is our. Meppen. Cruise director. No, he's our kind of our travel guide. So if anybody needs to book any travel, he is amazing. He's with. Uh, oh yeah, he's great. He's yeah. he did our Jamaica trip. Right. Yeah, and he really does a good job. First class, excellent service. He does a great job. So, so uh, run down some of the some of the towns and cities that you guys visit. Well, part of the problem is, uh, you know, on on the pictures that you look at uh you went to that first of all you can't you can't remember so we started in athens and then we went down to uh i I don't have a list of all of the yeah i'm gonna say a thing go ahead about some stuff that i know about greece uh it's where democracy was born oh yeah right there's it's lots of Lots of roots of words. Do you know what the plural of octopus is? Octopepes. That's a pretty good one. No, uh, it's it's any version of it is correct, but my favorite one is octopodes. That's a cool one. Octopodes. Oh, yeah. there's six hundred ninety-eight. So, but octopuses is also a correct one because really? language is weird. I have some things about your trip that you were talking about. Uh, Dr. Terry, when you were in Turkey uh, or Turkey, right? Do they say the it like that, or do well, they say Turkey? And, <clears throat> part of the problem too: the Turkish language is very complicated, and yeah. so uh, typically I can pick up some things in the native language. I literally got nothing. Nothing. It was rough. Well, I was going to say, so you guys went to Turkey and Greece, and in Turkey you met with some dentists there. So right. why don't you talk so, about? Meeting with some Turkish dentists and kind well, of your experience. And so one of the, you know, Can- uh, Constantinople or Istanbul, Istanbul sure. is actually, a lot of people don't know, and I didn't realize it either, is on two different continents. Yeah. Half of it is It's the gateway is to the on, east. Right. Half of it is in Europe. Half of it's Asia. Right. And there's a waterway right. that This goes uh, back to you not listening them. into geography. Right. right. Separates them. But we were on the European side of Istanbul walking, uh, just walking around, and we saw a dental office, and we thought, hey, you know, let's stop and see if we can talk to them. And the first one, they said, no, can you come back tomorrow? We're like, no, we're leaving. But the second office, their director said, let me ask and find out. Sit down. They're very nice. And he said, yeah, the dentist will talk to you. Well, first he Mm -hmm. said, can you prove to me that you're a dentist? And I was like, oh, okay, I guess that's... And he had you pull out someone's teeth. I pulled out. Uh, I pulled out our website and then showed him the podcast to kind of you know give us uh, some kind of. Uh, well, so how does he know but, that that wasn't all just fake? Right. I just made up like a, a screenshot of a dental office and a, yeah, but um, yeah. and then he he got. Um, he got us up to to meet the two dentists and actually both of them were. Um, are professors at a Turkish dental school. Cool. One's a periodontist, which specializes in gums, and okay. one is a prosthodontist Perio. that specializes in implant restoration, that kind of stuff. Okay. And the problem is, I, I mean, I couldn't even pronounce their name. Sure. I've, I've started following one of them on Facebook. He was very nice. They were nice enough to meet with us. We met with them for like 50 minutes, did some video of them talking stuff. The yeah. video is not great because it's on an iPhone and the audio is not great. But, um, you know, we just sat and talked to them about, you know, and it's funny because I said, hey, do people in Turkey hate going to the dentist as much as they do in the U.S.? And he goes, oh, of course. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, of that's a pretty universal of course they do. <laughs> experience. And, but he, it was interesting because he was talking about, I mean, you know, stuff's kind of the same the world over. And that's one thing. You, I didn't really know anything about Turkey. And so going over there, I had assumptions made. You still don't. <laughs> about, um, I made assumptions about what I was going to, find sure the way it was going to look and is it going to be dirty is it a third world country it's going to look you just don't know. in my mind it looks like the surface of mars yeah well not quite that bad. <laughs> i knew there would be people so that wasn't a surprise okay but what i okay. what i didn't well i mean i didn't really have any preconceived uh expectations but you know you, you can't help but have a like oh i think you know it just they were extremely nice extremely helpful yeah. they were um it was very clean um very a lot of pride in their country which is awesome to see i think that that's really important and they spent a lot of time making sure that westerners i believe were westerners to them um, yes uh, we are to the west right. of them technically and so well, it depends on which way you go. Well, I mean, to the east. I mean, you, you, you know got what? A, you got a big we, this boat. is where we get into the hemisphere theory. Yeah, you got All a right, big boat. We gotta... But anyway, he said, and I asked some questions. Like one of the questions I asked was, um, so do women make up a large part? Or do women go to dental school? I mean, I literally, you know, I sure. assumed they did, but I didn't want to assume. <coughs> and his response sure. was, of course they do. We are not Iran. Yeah, you know, sure. which I was kind of like. So the impression I got is that they think that most Westerners think that you just lump all the, which is exactly together, what you which did. Is exactly what I, <laughs> which is exactly, not exactly what I did. But I was <laughs> there was a uh, a bit of a uh, chance that that would happen. They and assumed so, correctly, <laughs> right? There was some danger of me making some dumb things. So I tried to kind of listen more than talk, which you yeah. know is not my forte. Sure. And so we ended up having a great time. But the whole point um, of going and meeting with them is to just get a, a sense for dentistry. Yeah. Over there, and what they said was, "There's a large." He said, "There's a large um, amount of tr people traveling from Europe to get dentistry done there." But he said, "The one that's really, really popular is hair transplants." In Turkey, people go there from all over the world to get hair transplants. Do Turkish people have really nice because hair? Because I is that no, what it it's is not like it? they're using Turkish hair too. Okay. What they're doing is they're I'm asking questions. I'm f I'm honing yeah. in on no, the no, truth. No. So it, what's it called? It's called um, uh, like actual travel. transplants. Well, you know, there's there's medical uh, not vacations, but medical uh, tourism. Tourism. That's it. Yeah. So there's dental sure. tourism. Uh, Gotta get that BBL, there's, baby. Uh, there's dental tourism. There's medical tourism there. Um, but they're... I was thinking about getting a BBL. What's that? It's a big giant butt implant. Oh. Where you get a giant ass. <laughs> No, no I don't think so. You don't balance think so. out your stomach. All right. Or, well, that that's thinking? okay. You no, know. no, no. But no. <laughs> so... Um, medical tourism is kind of a thing. Yeah. Where, because it's a lot less expensive. And the problem is... It boils down to um, employee wages. You know, the average sure. income for someone there is about four hundred and fifty dollars uh, a month. And what we found, uh, and they have Turkish lira. Is I what think that's the average minimum wage, is what you guys were saying, right? Probably, okay. yeah, yeah. But right. your uh, Dr. Marianne did ask, you know, can you make a great, uh, a, a good living being a dentist? And they said, yeah, you really can. And one of the guys, um, his brother is a neurosurgeon, a, a brain surgeon. His sister is a very successful gynecologist, and he said, <clears throat> when I told my mom I wanted to go to dental school, she cried for two weeks. <laughs> so, but he said, but then the follow-up to that was, he said he has a much more enjoyable life than they do. Sure. And, you know, in February, they had that large earthquake that sure. killed something like 58,000 yeah. people or something crazy. So we were something like 50 miles from where that happened, mm. and... uh a lot of the towns have a big influx of refugees because sure. some of the towns were completely wiped out. It, yeah. The focal center of the earthquake happened in... Um, that's what we should do the podcast about. The is earthquake? The earthquake. No, we don't need to do no. the podcast about that. Like teeth, we can talk teeth about teeth loosened it. from the earthquake too soon. But lots of people died. Lots of do refugees. Not be and so what we found was <laughs> we're driving along the coast. They have It's like lots of resort towns. And the interesting thing, yeah. the Mediterranean does not have 
nice beaches where we were at. I'm sure there are nice sure. beaches, but because the Mediterranean is such a small ocean, there's not a lot of waves. It's technically a sea. Sea. There's not a lot of waves to break down the rocks to make sand like sure. you get in the Caribbean, yeah. where they have like pink beaches. Where it's and an ocean. Coral beaches, and it's absolutely beautiful. Sure. A lot of these beaches were rocks and frickin' killed my feet. I got sensitive feet kind of action. Yeah. But we did a, a lot of touring around to see. I mean, we would basically get off the ship and then just get a taxi cab and say, take us to a beach. So you were in a cru- you were in a cruise. Did we mention that? I yeah, think we it was did. a you cruise a ship. Yeah. It's a smaller one, like 750 people or 700 people. Lots of old people. We did talk about yeah. this. What was and your favorite event that happened on the cruise probably ship? Probably the concert. Uh, violin player. Was oh, amazing. yeah. It was amazing. And there was a stand-up comedian that was so bad <laughs> that it was... We should give him a cl- it plug. Was What's so his name? Bad. Should... <laughs> it was so bad that it made it funny. Was he... Could you tell that he was like... Was he a native English speaker? Oh, God, yeah. Okay, it, I mean, so he was, like it wasn't Mormon. that he couldn't... He okay, was so it wasn't that... Now, was it that he... Was too like PG or like G rated, oh or was well, it just? Well, here's what was the most amazing thing is that he's been doing this for 27 years, and he's that bad. Sure, he's married. He did went through his whole thing, but it, toward the end, it got sad where he was like going, "Well, since you hated that last joke, this one's probably really oh, gonna suck." Man. And it was like this self deprecating it wasn't funny people were getting up and walking out Oof. i think there was like eight people by the end of his act Bobby. i think we saved face by leaving before he completely finished but yeah and he he had two he did two shows while he was on the boat we saw the first one and we talked to somebody that saw both of them and they said amazingly enough the second show was worse uh, than the first which i don't even know i mean it would have been more entertaining if he just stood up there and made baby noises for forty five minutes. It so? was really bad. Do you ever do you but, like do you like a comedian that does a lot of crowd work? We talked early yeah, in the podcast. I mean, could, we talked I mean, about a guy who was missing one of his front teeth. He's like a he's like a heavy fat comedian. His name is Stavros Halkias. Oh yeah, we talked about him. He uh, he's like famous for his crowd work, and he's really good at crowd work. And he just, meaning like, you just start talking to people. Yeah, he's just like, "What do you do?" And he just makes fun of their job, and yeah. like, or like he, he's just yeah, he's really good at that. But yeah, well, you have to have yeah. I mean, you got to be pretty solid with your, you know, with your comebacks, with, with your, your com- improv. Yeah, for sure. All right, what's your hey? What's your What's your two cents on Turkish coffee? We Turkish know. coffee. So yeah, Turkish coffee is very strong, and it it appears as though they don't. They it's do kind of like it? how do they make Sanka, it? Where it is almost like instant coffee. They just mix it up. They don't press out the coffee beans or the silt, and so when yeah. you're done drinking it, there's like a well, like instant a coffee is a, different from. Well, right, but, this it, probably, but it doesn't right. look like they strain it. it or, okay, gotcha. I, I mean, there was several different kinds. I liked all of it just because it was authentic. We had some really good teas, and when we were in the, uh, we were in a spice market. They uh, they have a world famous spice market in yeah. Istanbul, Turkey, and it was um, just very, very strong. The the coffee is very, very strong. Sure. And they take it very, very seriously. The Turkish yeah. coffee is very good. How do they make Your it? Don't they make it a like cool it. way? Well, so one of the things was they have like this sand pit that is propane heated. Okay. And it's a special kind of sand. And they yeah. pour it in like this copper little container. And then they slide it around and they set it in the sand. And it basically boils it in the sand. Yeah. And then they pour it into a cup. I found it fascinating. Your mom couldn't keep from... There's um, a funny there's faces. a funny photo. I, I'm probably not going to put it in the episode, but there's a funny photo of her grimacing after yeah, trying it the first it. time. She well, and That's her funny. thing is uh she's not a very adventurous eater. Sure. And so she'll look at something and and she'll say, "I'm not going to try it." And I'll say, "Why not? Well, it just looks weird." I go, "What do you mean it looks weird?" Well, it just looks weird. I'm like, yeah. and then she wants a list of ingredients and what's. I'm like, I don't know. Taste it and you tell me. Oh, no, I'm not going to do yeah, that. Yeah, even in, in like a foreign country, they refer to things by different names. So like even knowing, right. you know, uh, uh, I can't, I cannot think of an example. I know they That's say okay. something, cilantro is a different thing in England. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't do you know remember what, what it's called. It. I don't remember what it's called. But yeah, well, Write in. If you know what the answer that they call cilantro is, make a comment down below. 
right now and then like and subscribe and then tell all your friends. <laughs> all about I know the show. is there's a certain percentage of people that cilantro tastes like soap. That's uh, yeah, that's totally it's true. Fifteen like percent. I wanted to talk about. Uh, you also went to some really interesting amphitheaters in Greece. Is that right? Right. Uh, you know, everything like new construction in Greece and Turkey is like built in the fourteen hundreds. That's sure. like the newest stuff. Yeah, they were sure. talking about stuff that was built like. By the Romans, or you could see the Roman influence yeah. on the Greek construction, or vice versa. Yeah. And sure. you know stuff like uh, Alexander of Troy and he or Helen of Troy. Okay, and, good. Uh, uh, Helen of Troy and Al King Alexander, and all of these different people that you like. Are, Some would call yeah. him the Great. No, no, that's not the same guy. Oh yeah, no, Macedonian. Hell oh, yeah, we yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, we yeah. Anyway, Helen of Troy. Sure. And then. Uh, Sure. Three, the movie Three Hundred. I I made the mistake of like trying to watch those on the way back from stuff. It's like okay, well maybe I could. But anyway, there's a line in a Kanye song where he says Three Hundred like the Romans, and it's not the Romans. It's the Sparta. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty funny. That's well, a pretty funny. <laughs> I, I started right. watching some Anthony Fantano, Fantano things, and he did a countdown of the lyrics that aged the worst. <laughs> yeah. And that's one of them. Yeah. That's pretty funny. <laughs> well, right. And so basically every city you go to is built on like three or four other cities. Oh, sure. And so what they do is they find all of these artifacts when they're building new construction in yeah. the city. And that happens like all over Greece and Turkey and really the whole area. But another thing is we were in a, um, a cistern where they, they built this cistern in, um, in Istanbul. Yeah. And there was proof of like utilizing pillars that were from somewhere else. Sure. And because they knew no one would see them, it didn't yeah. matter. Like they would have a base of a pillar that was like somebody's head, but not only was it only part of their head, it was upside down. So they didn't care about basically is this, was this built for this? They're like, hey, we need materials just yeah. like any time sure. they're building new castles, they'll steal from other ones. And so that happened at the Acropolis or the yeah. Parthenon where part of it's missing because they took it down to try and build other stuff. So, But there was yeah. all that going on. But you mentioned the amphitheaters, and that was fascinating, the, the Roman influence of the amphitheaters sure. and how they, they knew enough about acoustics where underneath where your feet are, they put like a curved surface so that from the stage the sound would go out and then rebound off of that curve and be put back into the onto the stage and it basically would amplify yeah. amplify throughout the entire theater it was fascinating the the history of of what they knew I mean, we think we're so advanced, but man, they had their shit together. Yeah, you know, it's, it's amazing. It's really interesting. It's it's kind of the idea. We so the scientific method's only been around for maybe five hundred years, but and we were like, oh, I can't well, believe we can't believe ancient peoples ever figured anything out. But like, man, they had a lot of time. Well, it was they trial had a lot and of time error. to figure. It was trial out. and error. They could experiment <laughs> on people without getting in trouble. Oh man, yeah, it there's was a no whole... the ethical quandaries right. are way smaller. Yeah, it was a different time for sure. Right, and they could just and what was amazing is some of these structures are like, oh, this was built in seven years, and you're like, F how many people did yeah. they have? Working on this damn yeah. thing to get it done in that amount of time. They, le I mean, they leveraged the the power of the state to make these huge right. monuments. Usually, well, and for some of the castles, purposes. some of the castles that were built, they're like, oh yeah, it completely bankrupt the whole country That's just crazy. to build this one castle for this one ruler, and you're just kind of going. How do you get that through Congress? That's, you know, we you're talking about the budget. Well, Congress and all is that three shit. people. It's well, me right. and then people that I can I mean, command I mean, to have executed. Right, but right now, you know, the U.S. is thirty-two trillion dollars in debt, or yeah, twenty-eight that's, sure, trillion. Sure. Uh, so, but but anyway, the government systems, uh, kind of getting back to Greece and what they invented. Anybody that's seen my big fat Greek wedding. They go through and it's kind of tongue in cheek and sure. and kind of silly, but you listen to all the facts that they're talking about and they're actually true. It's a pillar. It really is like um, you there. There's a huge influence on our modern society 
and even through like the the founders of of the United States, they were hugely inspired by the ancients because a lot of those texts had been rediscovered recently since then. Right. And so uh, the Odyssey, Homer's works, uh, uh, Thucydides, all of those, uh, Socrates, uh, uh, yeah, all Sophocles of too, is, all of those ancient. Yeah. Uh, plays and things were hugely influential on democracy and and the advancement and and the enlightenment, which is the 1800s, like the the idea of logic and the Socratic method. Sure. There's such such huge influences on our modern society. So it's, well, and then again with 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 respect to Turkey, it's kind of a peninsula, and they yeah. talk about. Um, they talk about uh, Asia Minor is actually Turkey. Sure. And so yeah. the peninsula and, and basically the way that trade was was uh, developed was through ships. And because the ships couldn't sail very far, they had tons of different ports along the way. Like a ship couldn't go very far before it needed to be repaired because it was falling apart and it was leaking or whatever. So now there's fewer ports than there used to be. But there used to be part of the reason Turkey was so such an influential piece of real estate was because of the way it was shaped and, yeah. you know, the different... Um, connections between Europe and Asia and there's, trade. There's and it's so crazy. much history in that part of the world that I have such a small understanding yeah, of. It, it, was, wanna... it, was, it was kind of, um, it was very intimidating to hear, like, because we would have a tour guide and they would talk about, you know, I'm from a town 30 minutes away or whatever. And they said, you know, our ancestors would teach us this and that and blah, blah, blah. The amount of pride they have for their country was really inspiring sure. and it was neat there's a lot of of um, country pride and they they talked about one of their leaders which only came around like in the 1920s or 30s and he came and basically changed the turkish language um from what it was before it was arabic or whatever it was before and switched mm. it to turkish changed their whole economy Made, made them a more democratic society. It was fascinating. But we had a, a really good time. Yeah, it Very sounds like a really fun time. Yeah. And uh, if you're interested in planning a trip to the Greek and or Turkish peninsula, go ahead and contact Noam, Noam Mepin. Mepin. And the name of his company, uh, he's going to punch me. He's going to find, so we're going to get the plug. You find that. But while you're doing that, I'm going to say that we're now going to move on to our favorite segment, which is Celebrity Smiles. Please follow us along with the images that we are also seeing on the YouTube channel uh, at Tidor Productions on YouTube. Uh, I, I, I already told you who it's going to be, but it's going to be some famous Greek descendant people who are in Hollywood. Which is interesting, too, because Noam Mepin happened to be in um, Athens when we were over there. Oh, he cool. Toward the middle of our... That's cool. Toward the middle of our deal. And sure. uh, he, so he's texting me, oh, I just made it to Athens. Where are you guys at? You know? Sure. So... All right, are you ready? You're going to find that plug, but uh, on, until we figure that Expedia out. Expedia Cruises. There it is. Is the name of Go ahead his... and contact Noam Mepin at Expedia Cruises. M-E-P-P-E-N. Noam. Awesome. All right, so let's get to these people. The first person is going to be one, Zach Galifianakis. What? Yeah. He's could, Greek? You couldn't tell from his oh, Gal- staircase of a last name that you have to fall down to pronounce it? Galapagos. Zach Galapagos. Okay. Zach Galifianakis. From comedy. That show he's in Baskets. Is. Plays piano. Baskets fame. The Hangover. Uh, in other stuff, too. Wow. Yeah, he's young looking there. Very funny. Okay, so. He does Between Two Ferns, which is so funny hilarious wow. <laughs> the the like i haven't seen the movie but the episodes like the regular episodes are really, really yeah good. so this is a what do we got zach galifianakis he's got a pretty decent smile it's a seven given Six. zach galifianakis seven. a seven out of ten all right and the next person is going to be one billy zane billy zane i looked up top greek actors and this is what came up so if this isn't right it's not my fault i'd say it's google's billy fault. I zane it billy zane from he the was, mummy he was the phantom wasn't yeah, he from he the is. mummy i think he is in the mummy isn't he the Boy. bad guy 
No, I think no. that's a different guy. But he's in the tight. He's in Titanic. He's also the Phantom. Look up the Phantom. That's pretty funny. You should look up the Phantom. He's Billy got Zane. Nice teeth. What are we giving? Pretty nice. Billy Zane. He's got a nice smile. Out of ten, he is a. He's an eight. Yeah, you're giving him an eight. Yeah. And the final person. We're rocketing through these. We've only got a little bit of time. The final person is going to be one. Rita Wilson. Rita Wilson. Oh yeah. We. I thought we already did her. I do not remember. I looked it up and I. I didn't see it. But that's uh, Tom I thought Hanks we already did. wife. Right. I. I. You know what? You probably know a little bit more about this than I do. Okay. What do we got for Rita Wilson's teeth? Okay. Rita Wilson's teeth. Having trouble finding a... I mean, they're okay. They're pretty... Yeah, she got... Kind of crooked. Puffy gums, kind of a... She's a six. All right, we're giving Rita Wilson a six. She got a nice smile. Um... Is there anything else that you want to? I had one last question that I didn't Shoot. quite get to about your trip to Greece and Turkey. What is Shoot. the most interesting historical fact that you learned on your trip to Greece and Turkey? God, that it was it was like drinking out of a fire hose as far yeah. as facts. Factoids, uh, probably just the Muslim uh, learning about the Muslim religion and just Islam. Just learning, learning about Islam. The the religion is Islam. The people right. are Muslim. Muslims learning about the Muslims in sure, Turkey, sure. and they pray five times a day. Sure. But then they were talking about how they're the people in Turkey are not as hardcore as it's other much, places. But, much more different uh, culture. For but sure. right, we went to a lot. Of, we went to several mosques and uh, had to wear a skirt to cover up my legs. Your sure. mom had to cover up her hair. But it was uh, it was just fascinating. Sure. The um, and the language. So I don't know, just the language, how unintelligible it is for me. For I, someone who's who not, someone's has no, hasn't been around it at all. It's 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 that you know what different languages will do that. To well, you. but I mean, just like <laughs> whether it's Chinese or Korean or Japanese or whatever. But when you're talking about ones like German. Spanish, Italian, Portuguese, you kind of see some similarities, slight similarities. There's definitely the inspirations and cross-pollinization. Fascinating. And I, I wouldn't say I loved the food, but I loved trying the food. Yeah. And I had a Was it really gyro, spicy? Or I had no? a gyro. No, it wasn't as spicy as I would have liked. I was hoping it would be, because the spice markets were unbelievable. Yeah. But uh, I had a gyro, like... The bread fresh, freshly baked, and they carve off beef and put yeah. it in, and it was amazing. Yeah, it was very good. So, all right, and with that, we're gonna say thank you for listening to the Dental Works podcast. If you'd like to support the show, please give us a rating on iTunes or your podcast player of choice. If you'd like to get in contact with the show or you have questions, please send an email to dentalworkspodcast at gmail .com. We may talk about your question on the show, and if you're located in the Phoenix area and need dental work, please give us a call at. 480-391-0099. We got some more episodes coming up, uh, different ideas. We're going to do some a revisited, and then we're going to... We're going to introduce we're gonna Kristen. A, we're we're going to finally introduce that. Kristen. Yes, yes we're, we're going to get to that. About, she's sure. been doing a great job as our marketing director, and it's been really yeah. good. We're also talking about just kind of new subjects where um, the office is getting geared up to start building medical insurance, which is cool. very exciting. Nice. Because a lot of what we do is medical related. You yeah. Know, periodontal what? disease is a systemic uh, problem, sure. and we're really pushing to help people get coverage through their medical yeah. insurance. Sure. And with that, we're going to say thank you. So have a good one, and we'll see you on the next episode. This podcast was produced by T-Door Productions. Theme song written and recorded by Neil Hathaway. Vocals by Terry Work. Sound effects provided by freesfx.com and zapsplat.com.